Hi, everybody. Welcome to the Optimizing Developer Experience with Open DevOps webinar. I'm Tamla Takakura, Product Marketing Manager at Atlassian of Open DevOps, and I'm joined today by Gareth Wham, Principal Product Manager of Open DevOps at Atlassian. Let's get started. So time and time again, we're reminded that software runs the world and that every company is becoming or already is a software company. And with software playing such a critical role behind every business, it's no surprise that the market is demanding more innovation, more apps, and more features. In the last decade alone, we've seen revisions on the ruling frameworks behind development. We've seen shifts in how development ought to work, whether it's work pace, workload, or workplace. But it's not as simple as implementing a couple process changes. Faster isn't necessarily better. Decreased cycle time can lead to bad code. And technical debt not only means unhappy customers, but also unhappy developers. But that's not the full story. There is more to this. 61% of developers cite that they spend less than half their day writing code, negatively impacting their fulfillment in their jobs. Thanks to the increased focus on faster releases, developers must assume responsibility that's historically been outside of development. Examples include operations, supporting infrastructure, running the service, implementing workflows for faster output, and security testing. Last but not least, the pandemic has shaken all of our worlds. 39% of engineers find it harder to collaborate in a globally all remote work environment. And even though pandemic statistics initially said that productivity is higher, we're coming to learn that we're past the peak of its benefits. Remote work is now starting to show siloed thinking and poor flow of information. So what, you might think, these challenges aren't new and we've been managing just fine. So what have we been doing to align the ought to's with the want to's? We haven't really. Mark Horvath, application security analyst at Gartner, likes to run an exercise at each of his talks. He likes to ask his audience, how many of you are doing DevOps? and 90% of the hands go up. Next, he likes to ask, how many of you are doing Agile or Waterfall and then telling your manager you're doing DevOps? Three quarters of the hands go back up. DevOps is popular, but no one really knows what it means. What they do know is that they don't want to be seen as not doing it. Without specific methodologies that they can hang their hats on, they end up relying on what they got which is top level definitions. Similar to when Agile started to pick up, companies thought that by doing standups, they're now magically Agile. And in that same vein, companies that are tracking cycle times think, neat, we're doing DevOps. But we all know it's not about doing that one DevOpsy thing. And while we may not have clear guidelines around DevOps, it is possible. There are companies that have managed to push past the top level definition and make DevOps happen for them without industry prescribed methodologies. Let's take a peek at some of these DevOps champions that are well known within the industry. One prominent example is Netflix. Netflix is a leading video streaming provider known for their reliability and service. Today, Netflix makes $7.5 billion and has a retention rate of 93%. What's their winning DevOps formula? First, they feed developers with a constant flow of contextual information, so developers can make well-informed, data-driven decisions. They're also told that if they build it, they have to run it. And this mitigated a culture of blindly throwing things over the fence and praying it makes it into production. And lastly, they have no required framework, tools, or languages. They believe in the spirit of assignments, not orders. So developers are free to use whatever they need to get the assignment done well. And then there's Amazon. A former Amazon engineer accidentally and publicly 
shared the underlying tenets of DevOps that has made them an engineering success. They're as follows. They start by increasing information flow. All teams are required to expose their data and functionality through service interfaces. Teams were not allowed to communicate through any other forms except these interfaces. Then they built in accountability. All service interfaces without exception had to be designed to face the outside world. And finally, they didn't care what technologies their developers used. They knew ultimately Bezos doesn't care, so why should they? But not every company can be the utopia that is Netflix and Amazon. And Hertz is proving that you don't have to be either of them to embrace DevOps. In 2015, Hertz was down on their luck. The rental company had plans to close 200 locations and raise rates during the ride-sharing boom. So they introduced new management who made it a priority to bring in DevOps across the company as a part of a turnaround plan. Hertz's transformation started top-down, but they knew it's not just about setting the strategy. It's about company engagement and involvement in shaping what DevOps look like for them. They involved teams in selecting the processes and tools that allowed them to effectively target customer needs. And they were transparent. They had to be. As a public company, they were required to share the why, what, how, and who widely, but they chose to do it both internally and externally. And finally, in 2019, Hertz and Seated Enterprise, the long-standing leader, and became the biggest rental agency according to satisfaction ratings. So what's the secret, the common thread between all of these DevOps champions? They were focused on building an autonomous, outcome-driven culture, and DevOps just so happened to be a byproduct of that effort. For all three of these companies, it all started with giving developers freedom. They understood that DevOps is about developer empowerment, not enforcement. So they laid down no standards, requirements, and gauntlets. But that freedom is counterbalanced by ownership. They gave developers ownership over their code across its entire lifetime. As a result, developers started breaking down silos and working collaboratively with other departments early and often for the success of their features. These companies then further reinforced developer ownership with access to contextual information that allowed them to make thoughtful decisions as they were building and deploying their features. And it's finally at this point that the tools come into play. The tools they picked play a supporting function in delivering that information across a complex and fluid tool chain. It's at this point when the benefits of DevOps is realized as a natural byproduct of the culture or the people, not a technical blueprint. And this is why Atlassian is introducing open DevOps. <clears throat> With Atlassian Open DevOps, Jira lives at the center, aggregating, organizing, correlating, and sharing contextual information when and where developers need it. Organizations have the option to leverage our out-of-the-box connected core products like Bitbucket, Confluence, and OpsGenie, but we also support and even encourage developers to bring their own third-party tools. Yep. Open DevOps stands for the belief that the tool chain has to be flexible. And this flexibility allows organizations to mix, match, and swap tools throughout the entire SDLC, from coding to deploying and collaborating to monitoring. Now, no matter how your DevOps culture evolves, no matter the needs of your developers, Atlassian was built to support your people and grow alongside your business. Open DevOps also comes equipped with automation rules for workflows, best practice templates for team collaboration, and insights that help development and business teams come to decisions together quicker, meaning they're all tied through a common process. DevOps looks different for every organization. Maybe for you, it's this, or this, or this. 
Unlike other vendors, we truly mean it when we say we want you to bring your own third-party tools. We celebrate all tools and through it, all processes, all people, all cultures. With that said, I'll pass it over to Gareth Wham to go through the product demo. Take it away, Gareth. So our mission is to build the world's most flexible, scalable, and open DevOps solution that helps software teams ship high quality software faster. With that said, let's hop into an overview of what we have today. So I'm in Jira now, and the first experience I want to show you is the development and release panel. So you can see here all of the development and release information that has been associated with the Jira issue view. So the intent here is to provide more context around the issue itself. You can see here uh, the entities that, that we have, and I can click on any of these to get more information. So if I click on this one here, you can see um, that we have more information about this particular commit. So you can see the author, the commit hash, and, and the message. And this is true of all of these entities across the top here. Um, if I go to deployments, for, an ex uh, for example, I can see all of the deployments that have been associated with this issue, but I can also see uh, a way to go out to the um, provider if I want to get more information and do more of a deep dive um, on specific deployments. So that's where we started with Open DevOps. The next experience I want to show you is the, is the code page. So the code page basically shows the team all of the repos that they're working across. And this is based on the development activity. So as developers are including issue keys in their commits, branches, and pull requests, we're automatically able to determine that relationship between repository um, and project and store that in the graph and display that back out to the team so that they can see all of the repos that are currently being worked on. And this is ordered by latest activity first as well. So we do have plans to improve this experience, such as adding open branches and open, open pull requests in the future. So the next experience I'd like to show is the deployments view. So the deployment view allows you to see how work is progressing through the deployment pipeline. So you can see as it moves from development, staging, and ultimately out to production, and you can basically, um, that's visible to the entire team. You can also filter and slice this information in a way that makes sense for you. So for example, if I'm a QA person, perhaps I can hop into the environment filter and update to only show those issues that are on staging so that I know which ones I can test. Or maybe I'm a product manager um, and there's a particular feature or epic I care about the progress of, I can then uh, update the epic filter um, and slice that information in that way. So at the start of the year, we introduced some DevOps metrics. Um, so we have here deployment frequency and cycle time uh, metrics. And we put these on the deployments view as the deployments view um, refers to all the value that the team is shipping. And these two metrics referred to velocity. So we thought it made more sense to include these in the context of this view so that teams can get a sense for how often they're shipping value and how long that's taking. In the last couple of months, we've actually introduced two new full page reports for these DevOps metrics. So the first one is the deployment frequency report. So you can see the team's deployment frequency week by week. You can monitor how that the weekly performance is trending against the rolling 12 week average with this dotted line here. We've also with this graph able to show you the, the number of issues that are included in each of the deployments so that teams can keep track of their batch size uh, as a ways to reducing risk. Obviously, the less issues that are in a deployment, the better in terms of managing risk. So we wanted to just surface that information here. Also, as part of our research, we found that teams only had um, control over um, deploying to certain environments. And so we wanted to provide a breakdown of the number of deployments that are going out by environment. So that is the, in, the intent here with this, with this chart. And as we scroll down the page at the bottom here, you can see a weekly view. So this is the week that is currently selected at the top. And you can see the activity that's happening throughout that week. And the idea here is that we want to show the number of issues, again, that are going out in each deployment and how that's trending over the average. 
Um, so you can keep a track on a weekly basis on how you're uh, performing with your deployment frequency. Next report I want to show you is the cycle time report. So cycle time is um, that initial commit through to that commit making it uh, out to production. So similarly with the deployment frequency report, uh, we show a weekly breakdown of that. You can also see how that's trending uh, on that 12 week rolling average by this trend line here. As we scroll down to the bottom of the page here, you can see the weekly view um, of your cycle time. You can see which issues are exceeding that rolling average. And we've provided more context and more information about uh, these particular issues. Um, so things like the number of pull requests um, that are associated with this issue or the number of commits. And we've also a, uh, able to sum up the review time. So is the review time for this particular issue higher than the normal? And is that driving up the cycle time? So just providing more information and, and indicators as, as to why specific issues might be exceeding uh, the average uh, and why those bottlenecks might be, might, might be there. Cool. So I just want to move across to the next experience we have, and this is the on-call schedule. So this is an integration we have with OpsGenie, and this shows you the um, on-call schedule for an OpsGenie team so that when the team has a problem, say you're running a bunch of services and there's a problem with one of those services, you know who to contact uh, in order to have that resolved and have someone look, take a look at it. So next up, we have the project pages. So um, this is an integration with Confluence. It allows you to associate different Confluence pages with your project. So to use the services analogy, if you're running a bunch of services, you could have a series of runbooks to address and maintain those services that are stored in Confluence, but are also associated with the project. So that if you have a problem with one of your services uh, that your team owns, you can have the runbook here um, and hop out to Confluence um, if you need to diagnose a problem with a particular service. The next um, experience we have is, is automation. So I mentioned the graph and how that's an event streaming mechanism. And this is a good example of how we uh, are able to leverage that. So I've set up this automation rule here that basically transitions an issue from to do to in progress when a PR is opened. So that's activity that's happening outside of Jira, but Jira is able to recognize and respond to um, the, those events um, and transition that issue um, as I've determined here. Finally, we have JQL. So this allows us to be able to search for issues that match certain criteria. So this particular search that I've created here is basically saying, show me all of the issues in this project that have more than one pull request associated with it. And I can save that um, for future reference and I can build new uh, filters and searches uh, that I can constantly refer back to about specific criteria that I care about. So this example here is focus on pull requests, but I might want to search across uh, issues that have certain builds or deployments as well. So in order to execute on our mission, we're tackling it across three different pillars. Firstly, we want to simplify the tool chain experience. We want to make it easy to get set up and ultimately reduce time to value for our customers. Secondly, we want to go deep with existing categories. So we have our core centers of gravity today are source code and CI CD. And we want to make this data work harder for our customers. So you'll see us invest in new experiences that rely on this. Finally, we want to go broad. We have a core set of capabilities and experiences, and we now want to extend this with new categories. Examples include testing, security, observability, and beyond. We're looking to provide an experience across the entire software delivery lifecycle to better support teams and their delivery. All right, thanks for that demo, Gareth. Um, so we've had the privilege of seeing how an open DevOps approach can transform entire companies, not just development teams. And companies choose Atlassian because they do believe in our mission that innovation happens when team collaboration is unlocked. 
And they trust Atlassian's ability to enable an autonomous, outcome-driven culture through our technology. For example, Domino's Pizza partnered with Atlassian to address the workload challenge. Dominus knew that their developers like Confluence to collaborate and document requirements, but security had just joined a workflow that was already working well for them. Dominus leveraged integrations between Confluence, Jira, and their security workflows to break down barriers between security and development. Michael Shepard, an AppSec engineer, notes that that kind of automation is a key driver of today's efficiency of efficiency in today's software-centric world. And then there's NASA, who partnered with Atlassian to address their workplace challenge. NASA uses Jira and Confluence to stay on the same page with projects and requirements, as well as uh, they use Fisheye, Clover, and Bamboo to keep the code clean and fast. And these products were needed for JPL's advanced purposes. Dave Mittman, a software developer, shares that the Atlassian ecosystem is a big benefit for a team like ours that's collaborating across geographic locations. And last but not least, Run Through Runway partnered with Atlassian to solve the work pace challenge. Run Through Runway needed a set of tools that appealed to both the business-minded product managers and the technical engineers. Rent the Runway found that Atlassian was able to deliver transparency across business and technical teams, contributing to building a truly collaborative work environment. Genic Angela, product manager, shares that Atlassian has made it a possibility to increase software releases from every two weeks to every week. Now, we, know, we all know DevOps is a journey, not a single implementation. And you don't have to go at this journey alone. So we're inviting you to join our community of DevOps adventurers. First, you can try Atlassian Open DevOps at atlassian.com slash solutions slash DevOps. All Atlassian products come integrated out of the box and is available to you for free. And as you're trying our offering, you might run into some challenges. That's okay, not a problem. You can join us at Team 22, where our team will be available to answer any questions that you might have. With that, uh, we'll transition into Q&A. Um, so I'm just going to pull up the questions here. <clears throat> All right, first question. How is Atlassian Open DevOps deployed? Open DevOps is available in the cloud. All right, this is a nice follow. How much does Atlassian Open DevOps cost? Um, so Atlassian Open DevOps is um, offers a free product with no strings attached, and it's available at the link that was shown in the previous slide. But maybe you're already a user and you're ready to upgrade beyond free. Uh, pricing is determined uh, by each Atlassian product you want to upgrade. Um, in our research, we found that when it comes to DevOps, uh, the number of licenses that you need from each Atlassian product, whether it's Jira, Confluence, Bitbucket, it really varies on the number of people in each department and what their need happens to be at that time. Um, so we did want to maintain this flexibility for our customers. So today pricing is determined independently of any other Atlassian product that you might already have. Oh, this might be my favorite question. We use GitHub, not Bitbucket. Does this exclude me from enjoying the benefits of open DevOps? The answer is no, it does not exclude you. Uh, whether you're using Bitbucket, um, GitHub, or even GitLab, our open tool chain ensures that you can enjoy the benefits of open DevOps, regardless of the SEM you choose to use. So. Um, today, you can go into the code tab um, directly within your Jira instance and connect your SEM of choice today. <clears throat> All right, this is more of a statement, not a question, but I love it. Excited that there are Jira automations for our DevOps processes. Yes, so we're excited too. Um, so we actually do offer um, the capability to browse the full list of automation capabilities. Um, and you can view it in our JIRA automation template library. I actually don't have the URL offhand, uh, but we will make a community post available 
with some resources um, that we'll make uh, that we'll send to you uh, in the follow up email. Um, but if you don't receive the email, what you can do is go to the Atlassian community at the top nav bar, go to interests and DevOps, and you should see the community post specifically for this webinar. Uh, so I, I'll add that link there. Um, looking at the rest of the questions, it does look like it's more for product. So I'll pass it over to you, Gareth, to go through those. Uh, let me just find the questions that are coming in. Okay, so the first question I have here is what new tools, categories, and capabilities are, are coming next? Okay, so that's three three questions in one, but I'll, I'll do my best to, to answer that. Uh, so firstly, uh, with tools, um, our aim is to support all the tools that are used in the market. Um, we have a partnerships team that does outreach to the, the key vendors and the partners um, that are always kind of talking to them to look to see um, integration opportunities. And so, yeah, you'll look to keep an update on um, how um, different partners are integrating with us and when um, look out, keep a look out for announcements there as well. Um, in terms of new categories, um, we are currently researching what to add. Uh, we do have some preferences, um, but we are doing our due diligence um, I talked about testing um, and security uh, previously uh, in the presentation, um, but yeah, you'll you'll see us kind of make decisions around what new, those new categories will be in the near future. Uh, capabilities are coming next. Uh, so we are building a connections page, which allows uh, teams to um, facilitate the connection of tools, but also understand what value they get from performing those connections. Uh, so that is definitely something that, that we're looking at right now. Um, I also talked about the evolution of the code page. We are going to invest in um, showing PR information on that code page, open branches, things like that. We are also going to explore uh, adding that to the board as well, so that as teams are doing their daily stand-up, reviewing the board, we can show and have that, that code information available um, for them uh, at that point. Uh, we are also in the middle of researching a new releases and deployments experience. So we have a release page today and a deployments page. We want to uh, double down on that uh, and provide um, better ways for, for teams to launch software and really democratize um, the launching of software, help teams reduce the transaction cost and the handoff between product management, development, engineering, um, operations, analytics. Uh, and so, um, yeah, we'll be investing in that uh, this year. Cool. So I think that answers the three three questions in one there. Um, cool. Next question I've got is, how how do I get started with Open DevOps? Um, okay. So for new customers, you can go to www.atlassian.com forward slash solutions forward slash DevOps, and you can sign up uh, there for Open DevOps. And what that will provide out of the box is Jira Software, Bitbucket, Confluence, and Ops Genie. And I'll actually connect those tools together um, for you and reduce that time to value. Uh, and then when you get into the product, you'll also um, be shown some onboarding experiences to help you orientate yourself around that, um, that starter kit. For new customers, um, you can go to um, InProduct to do that. You can connect a tool via either the code page or the deployments page, um, which facilitates um, tool connection today. Uh, I'd also encourage you to go to, um, to the features page as well, um, which has uh, the ability to turn and toggle on uh, different features, uh, which provide jumping off points um, to, um, to do those tool connections and really start using the open DevOps capabilities that we have. Cool, so that wraps up our second question there. So third question I've got is that, uh, how can I stay updated on upcoming changes? Um, so yeah, this is a, it's a good question here. Um, we do have a public roadmap uh, that is published now and updated on a quarterly basis. So that's at www.atlassian.com slash roadmap slash cloud um, and you'll, uh, the DevOps team is um, keeping that updated every quarter, but 
even beyond. So the entire Jira software team, uh, Confluence team is also uh, updating that as well. Um, so you'll be able to see all of the, the changes and the features that, that we're working on uh, and when they're likely to land as well. Also, if you go to community.atlassian.com, um, at, the, at the top there, there's an interests section. Uh, under that, there's a DevOps collection. Uh, and whenever we're launching new ex uh, experiences and new features, we always uh, post a community post there. Um, so that's a good one just to keep an eye on um, in terms of what's, what, what we're working on, what is shipped. Um, yeah. And then finally, I already talked about the features page, but uh, like an in-product way that you can see uh, what's coming is, or what's available is looking at that features page. Um, we, we are aiming to, as we add new capabilities, new categories to have a corresponding feature um, as well. And you'll find that in the project settings of your project. Um, that's all we have time for, um, for questions. If there are any additional kind of questions or follow-up, please reach out directly. I'd be happy to, to answer and support you there. Um, thanks for taking the time and listening to um, an update on, on Open DevOps. We hope you like how we're thinking about it. Um, yeah, and we look forward to your feedback. Thanks again.